This is Technician Andrea. In this video, she will demonstrate how to use the standard Ludlum survey meter, also known as a Geiger counter. Since Andrea will be working with radioactive material, she puts on her lab coat with radiation monitoring badge attached. There are many different types of survey meters with as many different types of probes, but most have similar panels. We will be focusing on the Ludlum Model 2 survey meters with the Geiger Mueller or GM tube attached since it is the most commonly used in UIC laboratories. First, let's look at the control panel. Starting at the top left, the first switch is the audio on off switch. It is better to leave the audio on in most situations as you can keep an eye on your probe and use the sound to isolate the source of radiation. Turning the audio off can be useful if using the meter around patients, so as not to alarm them. Next we have the fast slow toggle switch. This does not mean that you can survey an area quickly or slowly. It is simply to adjust the rate at which the needle reacts to the signal from the detector. On fast, the needle responds quickly. On slow, the needle does not respond as quickly, but gives a more accurate reading. Next we have the reset button, which will reset the needle back to the zero mark. This is useful when transitioning from a lower to a higher scale. Finally, we have the scale adjustment and on-off switch. In the first position, the meter is off. The second position displays the battery charge. The needle should be in the area that is marked BAT test to show that the meter has an adequate power supply. If it is not in that area, the batteries must be changed. This can be done by opening the latch on the face of the survey meter and replacing the batteries inside. It is important to check the battery every time you turn the meter on. Next, notice the markings next to the knob that display 0.1, 1, and 10. These are the scale multipliers. For instance, at times 0.1, the top scale reads between 0 and 0.5 millirincan per hour. At times 1, the scale reads from 0 to 5 millirincan per hour. Finally, at times 10, the scale reads from 0 to 50 millirincan per hour. Note that when you use the times 10 setting, you must use the scale that reads times 10 only on the left. For instance, Andrea detects some radiation and has to switch to the times 10 multiplier. She uses the bottom scale and finds that she is getting a reading of 13 millirincan per hour. If she had used the top scale, she may have believed the exposure to be 17 millirincan per hour. This is a common mistake, so be sure to use the correct scale. Next, let's move over to the Geiger-Muller tube. This instrument can only pick up ionizing forms of radiation, such as alpha particles, beta particles, gamma rays, and x-rays. The meter will not pick up microwaves or infrared radiation. The thin mica window in the front can detect all four types of radiation. The sides of the tube can be used for detecting only gamma and x-rays. Watch as the beta particles from this carbon-14 are easily detected through the front window, but cannot make it through the sides of the tube. Now as Andrea moves over the cesium-137, notice that the probe picks up the gamma rays through its side. Some forms of ionizing radiation also cannot be measured with these meters. The low energy beta particles that are emitted by tritium are not powerful enough to get through the thin mica window on the GM tube. So tritium must be measured with more sensitive instruments such as a liquid scintillation counter. Finally, an important law to remember while surveying radiation is the inverse square law. In a nutshell, the inverse square law states that if you double your distance from a source, the radiation will be at one quarter of the original distance. Let's watch as Andrea demonstrates this law. As she moves the probe away from the source, the exposure decreases exponentially. At a little over one foot, she no longer detects the source. Keep this in mind as we move on to using the survey meter. Andrea has come upon an area that she wishes to survey, so first she switches on her survey meter 
and checks the battery. Then she starts off in the most sensitive setting of times 0.1. She keeps her audio on and the speed it fast so the needle is more sensitive. Notice that as soon as she turns the meter on, it begins to beep. This is naturally occurring background radiation, which can be anywhere from 0.02 to 0.05 millirincan per hour. With the meter on the lowest setting, she places the tube's end as close to the surface as she can without actually touching it. If there is contamination, the last thing she wants to do is contaminate her survey meter. But remember the inverse square law. If she is too far away, she will not pick up small amounts of radiation with her probe. She tries to keep the probe within 2 inches of the surface and slowly moves it only about 2 inches per second. She moves it in a Z pattern to be sure that she adequately surveys the area. Watch as she quickly moves over this source and she is unable to detect any radiation. Now watch as she moves slowly, only at the 1 or 2 inches per second, and she is able to detect it. The meter does not instantly detect radiation, which is why you must move slowly to be sure there is no contamination. Let's say Andrea finds a more powerful source of radiation. It maxes out the times 0.1 setting, so she turns the meter to the times 1 setting and hits the reset button. Seeing that that is maxed out as well, she switches to the times 10 setting and reads from the times 10 scale to find her reading. Andrea continues to sweep the area. She may be searching for contamination, surveying a package, or measuring a source. In any event, she is always careful not to hold the probe underneath anything, as something radioactive could drip onto the probe and contaminate it. When she is finished, she is sure to turn the meter off for storage. As you can see, using a survey meter is relatively simple and it is up to you to decide the area and amount of time you wish to survey. Remember to keep the probe as close to the surface as you can without touching it and to move the probe only 2 inches per second. This will ensure accurate results of the area surveyed. If you have any more questions about using the meters or if there is a problem with one of your meters, contact the radiation safety section at 67429 or 6SAFE after hours.